The doomsday clock is ticking, and it's ticking fast. The world may be heading for a third world war, but we are all unaware of what is occurring on our television screens. Warning signs pointing to the imminent fulfillment of the end time. The clarion call of the Battle of Armageddon resounds loudly and ominously, reaching the ears of all those who heed the impending doom. What do you know about the Battle of Armageddon? If you are one of the many people who feel it's just a baseless doomsday prediction, then think again because you're about to be shot to your very foundation. Armageddon, or Har Medigo, as it is called in the Hebrew tongue, is the location for a prophesied gathering of armies for the end time battle. In both Islamic and Christian theology, the term is referenced to mean the greatest battle by which the world will be brought to total ruin and destruction. This battle is predicted to take place in the plains of Medigo. Of the 12 times Medigo is mentioned in the Old Testament, only twice was it used in reference to the plain of Medigo. In the New Testament, however, you would find the prediction of the gathering of kings to battle at Armageddon according to Revelation 16, 14 through 16. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Armageddon, according to the Bible, is the time and place where God will pour out his wrath against his enemies and the enemies of his people, Israel, as he did in a type in the book of Judges 4 and 5 at Medigo. Even though Armageddon speaks of a great battle of nations at Medigo, Bible prophecy tells us that it will all begin with a conflict over the city of Jerusalem. For centuries, the city of Jerusalem has been the epicenter of many conflicts. From the historic invasion of Israel by the Roman Empire in biblical times, to the siege of Jerusalem between the 7th of June and the 15th of July, 1099, by the First Crusaders, which led to the establishment of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, the holy city of Jerusalem has been claimed by Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. Is it therefore to say there must be something special about the city that Jews, Christians, and Muslims call holy? This begs the obvious question. What is special about Jerusalem, and what is its connection to the end of the world? Jerusalem has played a dual role of both history and prophecy in the Bible. Historically, it is the eternal capital of the nation of Israel. But prophetically, it stands as the ticking clock for the rest of the world. Prophetically, the Bible speaks of a time when the Jews will be gathered back to Israel as their home. According to Joel 3, 1, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. A similar prediction in Jeremiah 23, 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. This was fulfilled in 1948 when Israel became a nation again and the Jews came back to their own land. But the latter part of the prophecy in Joel chapter 3 speaks of the gathering of nations to battle in Jerusalem. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land and they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. This is further established in Revelations 11, 1 through 2. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Also in Joel 3, 9 through 12. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves, and come, all ye heathen, 
and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the heaven of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. When the kings of the earth gather together at Medigo, their objectives will be simple, to annihilate the Jewish people and conquer Jerusalem. This part of the prophecy is already in play even now. The ugly truth is this, from Europe to the Middle East and to the United States, there are voices all around calling for the blood of Israel. This is in direct fulfillment of the prediction of the Bible. Ezekiel 38, four through six, 15 through 16. Now I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with some sort of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shields and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagarma of the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. The scripture you just heard didn't mince words in mentioning specifically the League of Arab Nations that will rise against Israel. From Persia, which is Iran, to Ethiopia and Libya, these are all countries known in our world today. A headline in an online media reads, when Iran says death to Israel, it means it. The article reads in part, former Iranian president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who called for Israel's destruction in 2005 when paraphrasing a line from the founding father of the Islamic Republic, Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. Quite literally, Ahmadinejad said, the occupying regime of Jerusalem must be disappeared from the page of time. Believe it or not, the events playing out on the world stage were already predicted centuries ago, and we are now in this moment living in the playback of an already written script. Not just that, sources say something unusual happened recently when the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, had a heated argument with the Minister of National Security, Itamar Ben Gavir, over a 14-story Palestinian building in East Jerusalem. While Ben Gavir considered the demolishing of the building a suitable response to a hit-and-run accident that claimed the life of three settlers, Netanyahu rejected the request on the basis that it might spark international reactions. Far-right extremist Ben Gavir supplied reports that the building in question poses a substantial security threat considering that Palestinians climb up to the roof of the building to throw stones at Israeli soldiers. When Netanyahu stood his ground, sources say Ben Gavir said loudly, we are being killed, and you are talking about angering the Arabs? This building is a security threat. They climb up onto its roof and throw stones at our soldiers. It is a serious security threat that affects the entire area, and we must destroy it. Meanwhile, according to one of Netanyahu's aides, it was reported that the demolition of a new building according to Ben Gavir's demand will spark riots in Jerusalem. This was reported in an earlier cabinet meeting where both senior government officials were heard speaking with a loud voice to each other. While the call for the annihilation of Israel is getting stronger, events with the Israeli government itself are aligning to cause a provocation that might light a fuse on the already overheated polity. The coming days and months are certainly one to look out for because many history-altering events are bound to occur. No one can predict when the next world war will happen, but one thing is certain, these are very uncertain times we live in. I hope you got to learn a lot from today's video. Go ahead and leave me a comment stating on things you found most unbelievable about this video. Be sure to check out the next video to get more accurate world events that are beyond the news today. If you are new here, remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.